being frozen alive truly is a horrendous way to die. However, there are certain instances wherein people cheat certain death despite prolonged exposure to the cold. Today we're going to be talking about people who were frozen in time and lived to tell about it. Erica Nordby during the early morning hours of February 23, 2001, one-year-old Erica Nordby strolled into the icy cold outside her home in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. She only wore a t-shirt and a diaper, which were not enough to protect her from the temperature of minus 24 degrees Celsius. She soon froze in the snow. Her mother, Layla, woke after 3 a.m. surprised that Erica had not been crying for food. Layla searched for Erica and soon found her curled in the snow outside. Layla carefully wrapped Erica with blankets, afraid that she would break her daughter's frozen limbs if she handled Erica too hard. Paramedics and police soon arrived and took Erica to the hospital. Doctors were about to connect Erica to a heart and lung machine that would have extracted and warmed her blood before returning it back into her body when her heart started to beat again. Erica then awoke 24 hours later. Mitsutaka Uchikoshi On October 7, 2006, 35-year-old Mitsutaka Uchikoshi fell into a stream during a failed attempt to climb Mount Roko in Japan. He broke his pelvis but remained conscious before passing out the next day. He was rescued when another climber found his body 24 days after the incident. He had remained unconscious the rest of the time he was lost. While it appeared that Uchikoshi was not frozen, his temperature had fallen to 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. He had maintained a low body temperature for an extended period of time. He also suffered from blood loss and multiple organ failure. Doctors were fascinated with the incident and touted it as the first recorded instance of a human hibernating. They observed that Uchikoshi's body shut down and slowly went into hibernation while temperatures on the mountain fell as low as 10 degrees Celsius. Miraculously, he did make a full recovery. Anna Bagenholm In May of 1999, Anna Bagenholm, a 29-year-old radiologist, was skiing with two other colleagues in the Kjolan Mountains in Norway when she fell into a frozen stream. Her head was underwater while her legs were above. Her colleagues tried pulling her out, but the water was frozen. She was also stuck between some rocks. Luckily, she found a pocket of air under the ice, but things went from bad to worse. She was slowly sinking into the water. She struggled to free herself for 40 minutes until she stopped moving. She remained underwater for another 40 minutes until help arrived, at which point only her feet were above the ice. Vagenholm was frozen at the time she was rescued. She was not breathing and her heart was not beating. Her temperature was at an insanely low 13.7 degrees Celsius. No human had ever survived such an extremely low body temperature at the time. Doctors hooked Bagan home to a heart and lung machine. Her blood was pumped out of her body and warmed before it was pumped back in again. This continued until her heart started to beat the next day. She came out of a coma 12 days after the incident. She suffered nerve damage that left her bedridden for one year, but did eventually make a nearly full recovery. Beck Weathers On May 10th of 1996, 49-year-old Beck Weathers froze and almost died during a failed attempt to climb Mount Everest. Before the climb, he had eye surgery to correct his nearsightedness. Little did he know that this would prove to be more problematic. The shape of his corneas changed as he climbed higher altitude, impairing his vision. Mountain guide Rob Hall discouraged Beck from climbing further and advised him to wait until he returned from the summit. However, Hall never came back. He died the next day while trying to help another climber. Weathers descended the mountain with other climbers until a severe snowstorm left them disoriented. Weathers lost his right glove and his right hand froze immediately. He soon suffered from both hypothermia and hypoxia. Some climbers found Weathers buried in the snow the next morning. His arm was still frozen and his face was covered in ice. He was in a hypothermic coma, which is usually the last stage a frozen person reaches before dying. No human had ever recovered from a hypothermic coma at the time. Weathers' climbing partners thought he was dead and abandoned him. However, a mountain guide and doctors frequently visited him for the next 24 hours, waiting for him to die. Instead, Weathers awoke from the coma and ultimately did survive, although parts of his face, arms, and legs did have to be amputated. Stella Bertensen On October 25, 2010, seven-year-old Stella left her home in Lear, Sweden to find an imaginary treasure she had drawn on a map. The temperature outside was minus 12 degrees Celsius, and her parents only realized she was missing when they did not see her for a while. Neighbors formed a search party. Her father, Peter, found her footprints at the back of their home and tracked them to a cliff where it was obvious that she had fallen. However, her tracks continued, indicating she got up and continued to walk toward the shore. A fisherman, three helicopters, and the Coast Guard later joined the search for the missing girl. One helicopter spotted her in the water and airlifted her to the hospital. Anna's heart had stopped beating, and doctors thought she was dead. 
Never giving up, though, doctors slowly warmed her body, and hours later, her heart started to beat. And 12 hours later, she opened her eyes, but quickly shut them. Anna started talking two weeks after her rescue and went on to make a full recovery. Three years later, she barely had any recollection of the accident or her time at the hospital. Which is probably a good thing. David Blaine You should know who David Blaine is by now. You know, that creepy guy who does all kinds of magic tricks, most of them weird and sometimes gory, and as well as endurance acts. Who could ever forget the time when he pulled out his still-beating heart in front of a live audience while being broadcast all across the United States? That stunt made a lot of people pass out, and should show you what kind of guy he is. Anyway, he decided one day to encase himself with six tons of ice and stay in that frozen coffin. It then stood up for 48 hours in Times Square of all places. Naturally, this stunt gained him massive media attention, and a crowd of onlookers, some of them magicians themselves, even went on a vigil in Times Square just to witness David's freezing his you-know-what's off. He then emerged from his frozen tomb 48 hours later with no major injuries, although he did complain about his leg cramping up. Although leg cramps would be expected if you stood for 48 hours straight, ice notwithstanding. Gardell Martin this last entry in our list didn't only survive being frozen, it was because that he was frozen that he survived drowning. Gardell Martin, a 22-month-old boy, fell and was swept away by rushing waters of a tributary of Buffalo Creek. This was just outside of Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania. The infant was in one degree Celsius for more than 30 minutes. When he was finally recovered from the icy water, he was very cold and wasn't breathing. For one hour and 41 minutes, rescuers administered CPR in a desperate effort to revive him. That's why those same rescuers are using words like amazing and miracle to describe young Gardell Martin's return home five days later. He's healthy and giggling and playing again with his siblings. Ironically enough, experts said that if the water wasn't so cold, he wouldn't have survived. Being dropped into frigid waters triggers the diving reflex, which conserves oxygen by slowing down the heart and shifting blood to vital parts of the body, such as the brain. Did we leave any miraculous resurrections out? Let us know in the comments section below. Wanna watch more videos about extraordinary people? Click on any of the links you see on your screen. As always, everybody, thank you all for watching. That's our video for today, and I will see you all next time. Later, everybody.